Okay, this conversation. Oh man. I am so excited to to share with our audience two people who are I mean j- I don't want to overuse the word, but is lovely an okay word? Yeah, lovely, magnetic, Ugh. Um, electric. Yeah. Um, but really the things you talked about were yeah. just, I, I really believe are going to be so helpful. So do we introduce our incredible guests? Israel and Adrian Houghton. I have been calling Israel Houghton for a long time. We'll get to that almost immediately in this conversation. But um, like that, I that love moment. these two and their story and their journey. It's so compelling. Sorry, I'm interrupting that moment yeah. when you realize that you've been calling somebody the wrong name for over 20 years. How did that feel for you? Well, I actually knew that I was, but it had become so prevalent because of our time spent in uh, overseas, as they say. So um, we'll get to that right at the outset of the conversation and then jump into one of the great Love stories, yeah. forgiveness stories, redemption stories uh, you'll ever hear. Yeah. Oh, sorry. You were in, you were talking about them. Um, Israel and Adrian. Israel and Adrian are public figures. They are artists. They are musicians. They are actor, actress. They producers. Um, absolutely incredible. I'm sure you've seen them on television or heard their art. And uh, I have been friends with Israel Houghton for, uh, gosh, 25 plus years. So I have been uh, waiting to have this conversation. So here we go. Wait, can we all see each other? I can't tell. I can see you. Half of your beautiful face and half of... Yeah, are we out of... Chelsea wanted us to wait to like see each other right when the recording starts. So it's like this authentic engagement. But... <laughs> Live is better. I am oh glad to know Judah is not the only person incapable of using a uh, computer. No, I suck at all this stuff, man. I'm going to bed. I don't even you own know. a laptop. It doesn't help my anger issues either. It's testing all of them. Oh, <laughs> Judah has their gifts. Uh, yeah, nice. we're, we, yeah, we'll start recording. Well, what? Mention that both of us have faucets for noses for the last no. 40 No. Yeah, our little guy, he's he's a mess right now, and Buddy. we're all, and we coast yeah, it. We just can't seem to pull it together. <laughs> passing around Literally, sickness Google, and disease. Can we just keep passing this back and forth to each other? Because it's, it's, at this point, we've been sick since a week before Christmas, and it has not stopped. Get out of what? town. That's serious. I am the most least the most least. The, I am the least spiritual person you will ever meet in your life. Not true. And when I tell you, I told Israel, I think we need to anoint the house because we keep getting sick. That's I, that's where I want you to know where I am. <laughs> that's, By I, the way, those are all lies. She's far more of a Christian. That's than right. I. Yeah, but overly spiritualized things. I'm Which not we like, appreciate. I'm yeah, like, that means you're authentic <laughs> and genuine. Spirit that's living in our house. Yeah, no, no. I'm, I'm there. I'm there. I'm googling the spirit of the flu and how can we get it out? Of our <laughs> You're naming the spirit. We, we the will, flu. we will come curse it for you. Bind it in the name of Jesus. Like, yeah, right? let's do an anointing service um, on the podcast. Yeah, <laughs> is walk us through the house. Israel, walk us through the house. Did I not tell you? Should mommy come and pray for the house? Oh yeah, no, she did, and I had to remind her that mommy already did that. I can't make this up. That's how, that's where we're at, okay? <laughs> I saw a freaking meme on Instagram. It's like, if there's confusion in your home, arguments or sickness nonstop, we recommend anointing your house. And I was like, sickness? I mean, we've got that. <laughs> do we need to do this? Shoot. This, this is, so you know what's sickening about what we're talking about right now? Is the what? way that you two look in your skin when apparently you're on your deathbed. I'm annoyed. This podcast is over and we're logging off because you <laughs> I, both yes, have man. a freaking glow that's annoying. Meanwhile, Chelsea and I feel great. Look at us. We look <laughs> like the sickies. You, know, you guys still got that Mexico glow on you. <laughs> oh, Very we tough. missed you guys so I, much. See my luggage fully still packed in yeah, front of the fire. We, we were ready, bro. It's still there. It hasn't moved. It's just waiting on the Lord. With a bunch of summer clothes in it. And it's the worst to miss something when your baby is being. I mean, those are the two most things ugh, yeah. that are just painful at the That's same time. Bad. So sorry, you guys oh, had to go through right. that. You guys look great, though. Seriously. You really do. And it's an honor to be with you. Oh my word. I love you guys so much. And I have been anticipating this podcast. 
Um, let's let let's get something straight here, and I I don't mean to throw shade at an entire wonderful continent and country of Australia, but I believe Israel. We have heard a rumor that today. we have been friends for twenty nine hundred years. Right. Let's set the record straight. Is it Houghton or Houghton, and can we get right down to it? In the United States of America. Where you are from and born in the and con- live. The contiguous 48 states, and then also <laughs> including Hawaii and Alaska, it's Houghton. But when you announced me so passionately, like, this is my friend, we've been close friends for 28 years, Israel Houghton, I'm like, I'm in Australia, baby. I'm not, who am I gonna correct? <laughs> Israel, I, they, it, the Australians did it to me. I know it's wrong. And I, it's like every time I do it, I'm like, that's not actually accurate. But it's like a stage I, name now. I'm confused. I, I never corrected Brian. I never con- corrected any of those dudes. If it's Europe, Africa, or Australia, it's Houghton. And I'm fine with it. I or, since, or Seattle. Or Seattle. Or Seattle. <laughs> <laughs> since we're Americans, let us publicly that apologize. It's Houghton, and I know it. Um, Israel, and just drop Israel. the last name completely, <laughs> because it's made my life just as difficult as well, because I require people to now say my name out loud, and I went from one last name no one can pronounce by loan to another <laughs> last name that no one can pronounce. So I'm excited to hyphenate the situation, you know? <laughs> Which I love. The hyphenation. But you can call me whatever you want, but it is Houghton. But by the way, I think you is just Adrian, just Adrian is also pretty, pretty fantastic all on its own. I'm here for it. I'm yeah. here for yeah. it. Yeah, no, no flattery. You guys can both just drop the the last names and just go first name, kind of like culturally. I think it just fits where you guys are at in life. So uh, <laughs> Israel and Adrian and, and and Tiger and Prince. You know, I mean, we can just start going. Yeah, you know. Oprah. <laughs> um, it's like keep going. I'm into it. <laughs> oh, I have more. Um, so I've been looking forward to this conversation, and I don't need to say it. I know I underscore it a lot, but one of the reasons I talk about uh, Israel, you and I being friends for a long time, is because at our age, you don't have that many friends you've been friends with that, for that long left. Sure. You don't have that many people who've mispronounced their names for that long, so. You know, Chels, we're trying to make some progress here in this okay, podcast, sorry. you know? Making progress. <laughs> no. Um, <laughs> and we've lived some life. We've lived some life. Yeah. And yeah. Israel, you and Adrian have lived some life. And uh, the journey we would have never predicted years ago at that little campground in Washington State that uh, our path would take us where it has taken us. And yeah. notwithstanding some pain and some challenges. And one of my favorite parts, uh, Israel Houghton Houghton about you is, uh, (laughs) your, your absolutely remarkable resiliency to trust in the love of Jesus and the goodness of God. And I count it such a privilege to, to, uh, know all of your babies and to know, um, uh, some of your friends and family involved in your journey, but, I kind of want to jump in today and I literally, before we jumped on, I asked again, I was like, Chels, can we, can can we go there and discuss this and talk about this? Because, um, it is what we are all about as human beings. And in terms of us four, we are about, uh, new days, new beginnings, new chapters, new seasons, and always thinking about what God has for us ahead. So. Um, I have so many questions to ask. Chelsea Renee, would you like to start? Sure. Let's 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 start <laughs> now and then we can go back and then come forward. I want to start with first of all the two of you. How did you guys meet and tell us a bit of your love story? Because I think that'll set up set up yeah. the whole journey. We actually met in New York at a church in Brooklyn called CCC. And it's A.R. Bernard's church. And we met for the first time while doing promotion for a movie called I'm in love with a church girl that you may or may not have seen on BET. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. I I actually filmed the movie. That was in 2013, but I filmed the movie in 2010. And it was a movie I did with Ja Rule. I'm the church girl. He's out here being thug life. And he meets a church girl. She changes his life. You get the point. 
<laughs> and Astro actually came on to the project. When was it? Maybe 20... 20... Top of 2012, I think, to basically work on music for it. Yeah. And I ended up becoming an executive producer and owning half the company and doing all of the score and being a producer on the film. So I, I then became in charge of like all the promotions and stuff like that. So like we wrapped a tour bus and went to all these churches and places and would do, you know, clips from the movie and we would do live music. And then I'd talk to the cast about, you know, their process in the movie and whatever. And um, yeah, I mean, we got it released in theaters and that was all cool. The day I met her was September 22nd, 2013. And I know that because I also met her entire family yes. at the same. So pretty much they started doing the promotion of the film and I didn't even know that it was coming out. Literally, I shot the film in 2010, around 2011. I'm like, are we not coming out? 2012, I'm like, we're not even going straight to DVD. Like, what are we doing here? <laughs> and then 2013, I actually saw on Instagram that you guys were at Megafest. Oh, yeah. This promoting church. the film. And I hit up Ja and I'm like, how are you guys promoting? I'm in love with the church girl without the church girl. So they're like, <laughs> I had a manager at the time that didn't love me doing a faith-based film, which is funny in itself, and kind of was blocking my promo of the film. Oh. And I was like, that's insane. I absolutely want to promote this film. I'm proud of it. I'm excited about it. And so um, they were like, well, our next stop is New York. If you want to come, we're doing CCC. You know, it's Israel will lead worship. And then they'll do like a panel where he asks questions and blah, blah, blah. I was super late as I normally am. <laughs> the lean in. But I, looking phenomenal. I so. like running in and they were just about to walk onto the altar and like do this panel. And I just met you quickly like, oh my God, Like, hi. how are you? Yeah. And but because it's New York, my whole family, we roll super deep. So literally it was like my mom, my stepdad, my dad, my stepmom, my sister, her husband, her dog, oh like my. the whole the crew. family. Yeah. And I just... I, I just hit it off so well with them, specifically her brother-in-law, who's now like one of my best friends in the world. And um, you guys kept in touch more. We than kept you. in touch, and yeah, I lived in LA, and she lived in LA. So occasionally she'd like throw a Taco Tuesday party and be like, "Hey, you all come out!" Like, I'm good for a theme, the you know, a little sip and pee. I'm good for a theme. <laughs> All these parties and Ja would come at the time. Yeah. T Bone yeah, yeah. get like there was like a, a squad of us that had done the film we still all kept in touch and had like a group of friends and then yeah so that is how we met and we were friends for three and a half years i went through a divorce during that time yeah she went through a breakup uh after that time she was uh, engaged to be married to somebody and um it's usually what you're engaged to be married. and then one day we were like she was engaged to be married to someone <laughs> As opposed to engaged um, in a... Then we ended up moving into the same building. I yeah. think that's where it got romantic, was like once you moved into my building. He moved into my building, you guys. I lived in the penthouse. He was on the second floor. <laughs> but pretty much I threw a party. He came over. He was like, you know, I'm going through a divorce. Um, I'm going to need to find somewhere nearby. Uh, you had a house in Malibu at the time, and you were like, I just need a place. He was like, do you know if there's any more apartments? But I was like, no problem. I will take you to the leasing office. And so he ended up getting an apartment there. And I think that's where our real friendship grew because. Okay, we were... Israel, yeah. you have to be honest on in good faith. That's our one rule. There's no lying. Oh, that's our nope. rule? That's, yeah, that's our rule. Oh, that's <laughs> that's our rule. rule. Okay. Did you move into her building with an intention of progressing the relationship with this Ooh, stunning woman who you had met? Fantastic question. Um. I think, I think gun to my head, subconsciously, yes. Did I think I ever had a shot? No. I, this is the first time I'm hearing this. So it was yes. Because the majority of the time that he lived downstairs, he was touring. Like yeah, you, was were, gone, yeah. you were traveling. So my job was pretty much to pick up his packages. Like that was the deal. We lived in a building that had like those lockers and you'd get a code and you'd have to go to the number of the locker and open it. And my job while he was on the road was to go get the code and get the packages. And I remember one day going and getting packages and I think um, you text me and you're like, hey, did you get it? And I'm like, yeah. You're like, did you open it? And I'm like, dude, I don't open your packages. <laughs> <laughs> what? He's like, no, 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 it's for you. And I was like, oh, okay. And I opened it and I love to collect vinyls. And you had like 
bought me vinyls and you're like, yeah, you need to like round out your collection. Whoa, and I remember sitting Oh my there guy. Like, Does this man like me? Like, what? why did you buy me vinyls? Like, I thought it was the sweetest thing ever. And I remember telling a girlfriend of mine, Angie, uh, I was like, I think this guy likes me. And now that I'm thinking about it, I would like him too. And she was like, well, you just have to kiss him to know if there's like an actual romantic thing. There. Yeah. And pause. Our first kiss was captured by TMZ in Mexico. Well, there you go. So all hell broke loose after that. Yeah. So you're just not feeling it out. Knew, we were good together. Because like, I expect her to go, hey, this is too heavy for me. You yeah. crazy church people. And I don't know what's going on. And I'm out. Because her publicists were like, Get away from this guy. He's uh, radioactive right now. Yeah. And right. instead, she's like, I was your friend before all this went down, and I'm going to be your friend through it all. And I was like, I'm going to marry you. It and nine months later, we were married, I think. Well, Something like that. So it was wild. nine months later? I didn't know it was... Wow. I don't, can I say, we got all the, all the crap out of the way in three years of just being friends. Yeah. Because in it... How about that? She, First people I told like, okay, here's what I'm actually going through. This is how I've actually torpedoed my life. This is actually what is not in the news yet, but when it is, it's going to be a rough one. And she's like, okay, well, sucks to be you, but you know, where are we going to lunch? And it was that it was just very chill like that. And man, um, I, I even told her like we had very reckless conversations as friends. I'd be like, I'm never getting married again. And I had reckless conversations. Like now that I look back and I'm like, I married him. He's my husband. I then think about our conversations. Like um, <laughs> I would get like flowers in my dressing room at the real from different like athletes. And I don't know a thing about sports. So Israel was the guy I would call and be like, does he play well? Like, is he someone I like, <laughs> like should I be receiving these flowers? Like, and okay. I'm like, I'm like, well, he leaves the league in rushing. And so that's probably pretty good. And I don't, what's his like, rushing league? He's running back, baby. Oh. They hand him the ball and then he runs. I thought you were what, trying to say he leaves. What is rushing? Is he fraternity <laughs> sorority? <laughs> <laughs> right now, I was like, Russia? Anyway, like, that was our conversation. Like, I would tell him this is that outrageous. if I had known I was going to marry him, I would have never said. Yeah. But that's what I loved most about our friendship right. was that he saw me on my ugliest, like, picking up packages with my hair in a bun if I had a cold or, like, we never attempted to impress each other mm. because we never thought we'd be together. Yeah. So I think that there's this weird thing that happens when you're interested in somebody or even now when I see my girlfriends on apps and they're like, okay, so what should I wear? I'm like, where would, what you would wear? Like, come on. Representative that comes and meets people when there's an idea that there's going to be a romantic thing happening that they want to show their best versions of themselves. They want you to hear all the good things about who they are in relationships versus us. We were literally telling each other, this the is worst the, the worst of who I am. Jeez. And this is the ugly parts of me. And I'm a total disaster. I'm a mess. And then we were like, this but, I still, together. but I, I still know. love you and really like you. <laughs> in our wedding, we actually had like a reading of a book called I Like You. We always say that the like is more important than the love. Whoa. And what we find that is obviously we love each other, but I think in love, well, I do I don't think this. It's scientifically proven that the in love phase can only last but two and a half, possibly three years scientifically. If you read the book Five Love Languages, it's in the first part of the book. I love that book. And it literally tells you that there is a chemical reaction that happens when you meet someone that you like, and that that chemical reaction, hormone, whatever it is. Yes. goes away after the third year and then you have to choose to love this person and the chemical reaction actually makes things go away that you normally would not like in somebody that you'd be like oh they chew really loud you don't hear it in the th first three years <laughs> something it's so strange and then three years happens and you're like Have you always chewed like this like that is literally like nails on a chalkboard but i think the awesome thing is if you like someone you're compatible with them Come you on. believe Similar things. You like to do similar things. You have a sense of humor that's similar. I think those things last forever. Okay. Well, and what I, I, oh, oh, come on, Renee. You already asked a couple okay, questions. Okay, your turn. 
I heal. Okay, Adrian, first of all, you guys should know that our management team is buying the rights to your story as we're talking right now, and we will be producing a feature film. So I, I hope I hope the negotiation goes well, because if this isn't a film, I don't know what is. But anyways, uh, Adrian, I got to ask you to quote my friend Israel. He used yeah. the word torpedoed. Okay? Yeah. He, he, he used uh, another I, word. It's on fire. Right. He lit my so, actually. so I want to know, think about all the people that are going to watch this. And yeah. first of all, I just want to go on record side note. And I know I'm spider webbing a lot here. Bear with me. But when I found out that Israel was seeing you, I think we were all praying to God that this would work and that he would have a chance. And um, so we are all very, very grateful that you married Israel. Um, I, uh, this is a not testament. What I'm feeling on my end. Okay? <laughs> not Absolutely not, Jezebel. You will not come in here destroying our favorite worship leader. That that was what I felt. Okay, so it's nice to hear that. <laughs> um, you are an absolute force, and uh, we love you so much. So I gotta ask, yeah. why, as this man's own words saying, "Man, I kind of sabotaged my own life." He's in this really, really painful place. And in our little Christian vertical and ether, um, Israel was taking some of the most intense heat that any you know public Christian leader could take. And here is Adrian falling for this man, in love with this man. Why? Why in the middle of all that were you like, I'm down, I'm into this guy, and we're doing this? Funny enough, during the time that we started dating, I grew up in church. My mom was literally superintendent for children's ministries of the Eastern District for <laughs> Assemblies of God. I grew up in like old Pentecostal Hispanic church. And funny enough, I feel like I've lived multiple lives in my one life. And when I did I'm in love with a church girl, I feel like that promo tour, that album, Jesus at the Center, kind of brought me back to church. Wow. Like wanting to go to church. It was actually going to Hillsong, New York. And I was like, this is an Irving Plaza. Like, this is very cool. Like, I just went to a Meek Mill concert here two weeks ago. I'm like, this is awesome. So I started going back to church and all that to say, I think I had heard enough sermons at this point to know that we are not what we've done. Come on. Do you know what I'm saying? Like I had yes. heard enough sermons that said like, even though I had heard all of it, I was like, I still believed that I wanted to see him maybe the way God sees him and that like he was worth being forgiven. He was worth being listened to of why and how he had gotten to that place to me was far more interesting than the salacious things he had actually done. Um, that sounded really funny. Salacious. <laughs> salacious. What a great um, word. <laughs> salacious things that were on Shade Room and everywhere else that you were seeing it and all the people that were in my comment section. And I actually genuinely felt like I love him and mm. I would want someone to not drop me like that Whew. if I was in that situation. Like, I wouldn't want that to be done to me. I wouldn't want for someone to be my friend when it looks good for them and then leave me when it doesn't look good for them. I am not a professional Christian. Being Christian is not part of my business or my industry at all. Wow. So I don't have to answer to those people and it does not affect my bottom line Come on. when I choose not to do something that the Christian world thinks is amazing or not amazing. So I, the things that matter to me more is actually what God thinks about me versus like someone that possibly could or could not pay my rent. You know what I mean? Like that is Jeez. the real part. And I used to joke with him and be like, that has to be so hard. And you guys, I'm sure of understand course. this more than anyone, how hard that is that if you are going through something that's really difficult and maybe you're not living your best Christian life, that affects the food that you could put on the table for, for your, your children. Like literally, your livelihood ends up depending on people's perceived uh, version of your walk with God. Wild, and that's really hard. And I chose to do what I believe God was going to be proud of, which was being his friend and actually loving him the way 
shockingly, the Bible tells us that we're supposed to love people. We're supposed to love them in the good times and the bad times. We're supposed to be an example of God's grace. What a concept. Right. And that the Bible <laughs> talks about this grace, yet I wouldn't be like the staple child for being a Christian, but I'd like to actually live as close to Christ as possible. I don't know if I do a very good job at that, but in this area, yes, I think do. I was just like... Used by God, for I, sure. I think I was just... And the weird thing is, while it looked like a whole circus, we were in so much peace. Peace, man. Like, sure. like strange, like chilling, like, well, where would we want to run away? Like, where would we want to run away to? Do you want to, do you want to, like, give guitar lessons to kids in freaking... Santorini? Like, sure. Sure. Works. Yes. <laughs> You know, like, I, I didn't know how to handle the heat I was receiving, but I knew that my loyalty to my friend mattered more. Wow. Wow. So you talk about this incredible piece, but Israel, I'm sure you had to fight for that piece. Can you tell us a little bit about what this season was like yeah. for you and your journey? So, and So I think I've heard it said this way, like, sin is only powerful in the dark. It only does its worst wrecking wreckage in the dark and so from 2009 to probably 2015 i was battling through that alone i went i went i went to a counselor and realized i went to a professional counselor and realized he told a pastor everything i told him. and that's that's a, that's a completely different thing oh my i had no idea about that this is it's very real it's very real it's very real. And so when that happened, I'm like, oh, then there's nobody that I can go to. And why would I? I had friends that I sort of pushed it like eh, I'm dealing with something. And two weeks later, heard it from somebody else. And I'm like, OK, that's that's enough of that. So I I dealt with it. My crucible was done individually and without any help at all. And in a separated, you know, uh, era with my then wife we had five years of, of not being together except for sort of the you know oh the optics you should be at this event or whatever but um but for the most part like i just had to battle that so when it all had come out i'm i mean i hate to say this without sounding um anything but regretful of, of people that got hurt but i was on the other side of it I like see. i i i had dealt with it yeah. Dealt, it, dealt with it with my family, dealt with it with my kids, and I was on it. By the time it got to the public, like, I'm, like you guys are the last to know. Yes. Like, we're all like, but we recognize how bad that looked. But when it started happening, some of the best advice I ever got was, if you have to make a statement, make a statement. And I did. I said, I've, we've gone through a divorce and appreciate your privacy, you know, all that kind of stuff. Right. But the next piece of advice was, shut your mouth. Don't say a thing. Don't say, well, what had happened was, or here's my side of the story, or those three things are true, but those six things are false. I didn't, I didn't address any of it. And I just walked life through with, with this one here. And, and, with a, and, and my, my friend group probably shriveled from, you know, you know how it is when you think you're, everything's fine. You go, I have 200 friends that would stick with me no matter what. What? At least 200, probably 500. But I know I have two. And then one day when you realize you have six. Total. I feel like six is a whole lot. Six is great. Right. Give me two. Maybe three. I'm, I'm happy with the six. And, this is a lot. And that number is swelled to eight. I have like eight really close friends now. Maybe nine. <laughs> I'm kidding. But um, it, once I found my little squad of people, and it happened to be her and her family and, you know, a few friends, you guys for sure. Um, I was like, I, I think I can get through this. And there was a lot of opportunity to push back, to make other people look really bad. And I could have, uh, and I didn't. And I think now going on eight years married, like we're, we're going, we know we're the better for that. And we went through the freaking, you know, we went through. I'm like trying to think back of how, you know, when you try to put yourself back then where we were, who we were, mm -hmm. you, we were different people back then. I'd be, I'm not, sure, sure. you know, just like, I think eight years makes a huge difference. But right. when I'm even looking back, I'm thinking about how 
we were just like, well, if it's going to be over, we might as well be together. (laughs) (laughs) They already mad. Well, what are we going to do now? Like, we might as well be together, do what we want to do. And the oddest thing was, this is so weird. Go ahead. Um, <laughs> it, we literally got a phone call from the uh, my publicist at the time. And she's like, so I've got these pictures of you guys, blah, 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 blah. Oh, yeah. We hung up the phone. And why did we start listening to that Covenant Worship album? Oh, and we were true. just like listening and listening to worship music in the hotel room. Just so random. And I just thought, I literally right now, as you were talking, I was thinking like, what? What did those days look like for us? I remember we like pretty much said like, we're just going to take comments off of our stuff and just see what happens. And it's so weird mm. how I said we were different people then because the people that were commenting are also different people now. Mm. You can't imagine how many DMs I've gotten in the last three I'm years. I'm so sorry. I said horrible things about you guys, about your marriage, and I love your love, and I'm so sorry, and wow, so God bless you. Weird. And you're like, wow. It's so That's kind of cool. Can you speak to, oh, my word, I have so many questions. Um, can you, you know, C.S. Lewis said, uh, at the risk of sounding like I'm very well read, uh, I took one college class on C.S. Lewis, but he said that God whispers in our pleasure he speaks uh, in our conscience in everyday life, but he shouts in our pain. He shouts. And he, he believed that pain was the megaphone that maybe God would use to rouse a, a, a dead and dying world. Did, did God shout in your pain? Did you feel that? I, I for sure feel that. I feel like I thanked God for family at that time because mm. there were so many people that didn't know me that were saying terrible things about me. And I remember my mom being like, hey, if they don't know you personally, then you can't take it personal. You know, like that was like wow. a thing. I started thinking about that and I started thinking about, well, my mom is a woman of God and she loves me and she doesn't hate me right now. And she doesn't think I'm what the internet is calling me. I'm not a home wrecker. I'm not some Jezebel. I'm not a whatever it is, right? right. I, I'm not a girl that's using him for his money and all, you know, like it was like, no, we're, that's uh, a hysteric. That was one of the funniest things. Yeah, I was like she's a gold dead dude. broke, like <laughs> dead broke. Like any royalties I had, all went to alimony and child support. Like I was dead so, broke, borrowing you know lunch money from her. But I'm like, sorry for laughing. That's all I can do. <laughs> like I, you know the truth, and there's something really dope about that and special about that. Yes. And, that brings you peace. When you're like, the people that know me and love me and care about me, they know the truth. So what, like, I tried, started trying to think, oh my God, was it Judah that did that word about, it was you. Okay, this is really weird. Okay, um, Zoe conference the first year. Yeah, yep. Sunday night. You spoke. Okay. I think, it was Sunday night. I think so too. Yeah. And you a whole word. And it felt like confirmation of something I had thought about when I was going through this was like that none of this stuff actually matters. Like you did a whole preaching about, sorry, the way my ADD is set up. You did a whole set preaching up. about how much how no one likes to talk about that uh, we're going to heaven. The rapture, like the rapture right. and how this is all going to end. And like no one is actually deciding like we're going to talk about this because we actually, some of us like it down here. Some of us like, we actually were doing all right. It's not that bad. I kind of like it. What does up there look like can sound scary to us. And like, we we fear it because we don't know it. And it's in our human form. We can't even imagine what there is to be up there. All of that. Yep. Rewind. But your take on it was, I'm longing to see him. Yes. Mm. And you talked about going on trips and like your dad coming back home and you being like, I'm so happy. There's a whole thing. Okay. Yeah. Yep. How I remembered that right now in this moment is bizarre. But Jeez. I was about to quote you to you, and that would have gotten weird. So I, um, I remember at that time just really believing that I needed to put my mind on something that wasn't earthly. Ooh. Like I had to like think about what's eternal, and that people talking about me on the internet that ain't eternal. Like. Mm. Who are you? Like, what does God think of me? And that those things were going to matter long term. So I really shifted my perspective in that time 
Because if not, I would have been a mess. I, I, I'm a people pleaser. I right. would have crumbled Same. up and died. Same. So, and I would answer your question. He definitely shouted at my pain because I see the results of it now. Mm. But I was, I had so much noise in my life. Mm. Like my whole life has been noisy and full of doubt and full of competing voices. And I think for the first time, you know, the, the ride slowed down enough for me to actually hear his voice. Wow. And he whispered to my pain and he said, I've got you, I've always had you, and we're gonna get through this. And those were the chilling ones for me. And I know how he dealt with the pain because I'm low key pain free, you know, all these years later. Um, and I say that, you know, knocking on wood, everybody goes through stuff, but that pain, I don't remember. That, that's gone. Think and and that's only God. That, that could only be God. For sure. Like that's only, how we got through that and we were just like, we're okay. Like, we don't care what anyone thinks about us. God is on our side. We got like. What a beautiful place to be. What, what it was, I was shocked when I think about it now. Like, if, if I'm honest, if you told me if I went through that again today, I would fear it and be like scared of anything like that happening again. But it's weird because I remind myself, God walked us right through it and we were, we were actually okay. What is absolutely blowing my mind right now is two things. First of all, Israel, the way you look at your wife with love and care. It's, it's my favorite. Are, are, have you been noticing yeah, that too? Yeah. It is just like the absolute look of love and adoration. And it's just the I just sweetest. I think she's magic. I'm into it. it. I you want you to look tell. at me like that sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell you think she's magic. But the fact that you guys went through all of this and you're not bitter you're not angry. You are not wearing the criticisms of the world as a badge of honor that you have came through this honestly without bitterness is beyond me. And I think a lot of people experience a lot of pain that's very different than what you have experienced, mm. but don't come out without bitterness the way that you guys have. How have you done that? Wow. The thing is, <laughs> We're all human, man. Like, we're, we all, like, have our things. Like, I even think about when we talk about people DMing us and being like, my bad. I think about the fact we probably be talking about people, too. Everybody be talking about somebody at some point. You know, whether it's Will and Jada or, like, the reality is we all will yep. talk about people that we don't know personally, possibly, and get the wrong idea. I think the only thing we can do now is... Crazy enough, there were a lot of eyeballs on us. And it was like, well, what are you going to do with that? Like, what are you going to do with that? What are you going to make of that? And I think we found purpose in in that. Like, we literally yeah. call each other. Like, I'm like, oh, that's my purpose partner. Like, what I'm supposed mm -hmm. to do in life is attached to him wow. in a special way. And I'm grateful for that. So now that we're here, we going to be bitter or are we going to do something special bitter. together? Are we going to do something that can maybe help others that are going through something similar or just dealing with people viewing your situation in a way that maybe not be great. And how do you come up on the other side better? Yeah. That, I think that's a great answer. Yes. I'm going to say it's probably a little tougher for me because I'm, I'm a justice. Mm -hmm. I'm oriented You're super kind justice of person. Oriented. And somebody should tell them that that was, Super like, they should the know need. that I'm still upset about, you know what I mean? He feels the need to just, like, all the time, though. Like, <laughs> random. And, so, like, I didn't like that. Like, I think I'm going to say something about that. And I'm like, I don't, I don't think you need to. But he's very justice-oriented and, like, very, like, it's the principle. <laughs> so, I said, can I be honest, though? This is not a shameless plug. One of the things that has helped it significantly is starting your day with intention. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. And church home, the church home app, the app this is just a it. quick little commercial, but like the church home app has been yeah. life changing for us because you can immediately apply it. Yeah. And you can set your day based on that guided prayer, based on that scripture, based, you know, and we're like, for me, that just helps me go. It's sort of like working out. If, yep. I, if I've gone and worked out, I, I don't leave the gym going, I need donuts now. No, like, you eat better because you just you, killed right. it in there. So like, true. I'm not going to put that to 
to waste. Right. So it's this kind of the same idea. If I'm setting my intention with God, you got today, and I know, I know the world is what it is, but like I'm setting my intention today to honor you in everything I do, to to see you in other people, and let's go. But you don't then go into bitter mode after that. Mm-hmm. If if you if if you can't, you know, if if you can stop it. Wow. But specifically for me, where the church the church home app then goes, think of someone else. Mm, I love that. That like literally shifts everything because you can get caught up in what you're going through. You can get caught up in like what you've got going on, your own issues. And even now when you're like, how are you guys not bitter? I'm like, man, there's people that are still like angry and mean and commenting on people's Instagrams. Like I got to think about them. That ain't a happy place to be either. Like what you going through that you on here being mean to me. (laughs) So I just think to some extent, like, that moment where you're like, okay, God, I'm going through this and this sucks. Think of somebody else right now that you can pray for that needs to, that's maybe afraid of something they're about to go through. How can you pray for them right now to not be fearful and to know that God's with them? So that I think is so dope because it doesn't make it all about you. And I think so many of us, when we're going through crisis and we're going through hard times, the first thing that we do is we go to apps and we go to the every app we can find and we're like, God, here's my Bible. When I just flip it open, <laughs> you're gonna have the answer for what I'm supposed to do right now in this moment. Don't act like you've never done that. Oh. Don't act like you've never been. Man, like, I named kids I- that way, man. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> this job or am I not supposed to take this job? And it's like the brother of the Hittites and the Mita, and you're like, that was not what I wanted to hear. <laughs> But nights and <laughs> make it all about yourself. You're like, I'm in this crisis. I need something that helps me right now. But there's something really beautiful that happens when it goes, God, I'm afraid right now. Is there someone else that's afraid that I can pray for? That's good. Ooh, you just inspired me. I want to do a guided prayer prompt to pray for it's mean so people good. on the internet. That's what I wanted. Like, yeah. that, how fun I, would well, that be? That actually, I'm yeah. recording some right after this podcast. I'm going to do it. Watch. <laughs> <That's so laughs> good. Did you, did you, I really am. Did you pray for Kiki? I did pray for Kiki. I prayed for Kiki. Kiki was on the app and said she had a prayer. I prayed for her. It was great. I, I did pray in the bathtub this morning. I did my guided prayer. I'm not going to lie to you. And I did pray for a few people that are a bit cantankerous. And uh, it was helpful. I want to say that I have been obsessed with this concept lately of, of spiritual maturity, or as the intellectual community mm-hmm. says, maturation, spiritual maturation. Spiritual formation. Uh, spiritual formation. Um, because that is such a uh, underestimated, underrated concept, which simply indicates this idea that each and every one of us ought to go and grow every day, right? This, this operative word of go is so imperative in scripture and Jesus is into the go, God's into the go. He's always got us like we're, we're, we're going somewhere and, and that is significant. And I just want to say to the, to the two of you, I, I actually think uh, because you're both so sexy and so sensational, uh, we don't use that term enough. It's true um, that I think I think one of the most underrated, underestimated aspect of the two of you individually and collectively is your formidable spiritual maturity. And wow. one of the ways I define spiritual maturity is not um, morality. Uh, your, your, the state of your leather Bible, um, your church attendance, it, it is things like forgiveness, yeah, things like relinquishing and releasing bitterness. And, um, probably Israel more than you realize because our lives have found some parallel moments together. And there's been whole chapters where we haven't seen each other very much and talked very much. And, it occurs to me that some of that was 2009 to 2015 <laughs> when you're going through hell. Um, but nonetheless, your spiritual maturity, the two of you, um, makes me feel like I have more wind at my back. Mm-hmm. Makes Chelsea feel like we have more wind at our back because without even knowing it, and Adrian, you're, you're such a force and you're such, you're electric, you're a light, like a lightning bolt. But but amidst of all of the beauty that that is you two and the talent that you so obviously portray and emanate and people um, love to follow you guys and watch you guys, I I just want the world to know if I could shout from the mountaintops that you have helped define again for me 
what real spiritual formation looks like, what real spiritual growth looks like. And um, thank you for making it swaggy. Thank you for making it sexy. Thank you for making it attractive and appealing. But thank you for wanting to be more like Jesus because um, few things matter more to me in the whole wide world. And every time I am around your husband, Adrian, you have to know, uh, I feel more encouraged. I feel more built up. But I also feel more desirous to to be fully integrated and, and, and be the kind of person that is consistent and loving and caring. Um, and if, if pain has produced some of that in the two of you in some sadistic, weird sort of way, then I am grateful for it because the world's a better place when the Houghtons are, <laughs> are in full flight. And you got to know, I just think you guys are in full flight. And mm -hmm. I think you're impacting people more than you could ever possibly imagine. Chelsea and I are in love with the two of you, would do anything for you. And, and it sounds like I'm closing the podcast. I didn't intend to do that, but um, I just, my heart is full, even, even talking to you both today. Yeah. Okay. True confession. I'm sitting here listening to Judah and I'm thinking, how can I look at him the way Ju the way that Israel looks at Adrian? Oh. <laughs> Yeah, work on it. Right. I'm, Honestly, work I'm like on trying it, okay? to work on it. No, yeah. but it's just practice makes perfect. Okay, we're got it. Start right now. I'm gonna start talking, 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 talking. Okay. Look at me. Talking, talking, talking. Yeah, it it's close. That's it's pretty good. Right. It's a little disingenuous. <laughs> I never see myself looking at you. Well, I can't see you looking, looking at either because I was looking this way. Right, I know. I was like, it's really not. Special. We had the thought and didn't even know. I was looking at Israel and I'm like, oh, that's that's real. That's, that's... a look of love. Hey, can I? Can I? Can I? Can I just respond to what you said? I think, I think watching your journey and watching you guys do life, do church, do family, do um, you know even your external work. You know, you're you're known outside of the church as well, right? So you've had to navigate a whole lot of stuff as well. Um, but you do it by. Embracing the mystery of who Jesus is, but de demystifying it, like for us. Yeah. I don't know how else to put that. Like, <laughs> it you 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 embrace the mystery. You you've you've got you know forty years of doing this, but but there's this. Let me break it down for you so you can apply it yeah. at at Equinox Gym tomorrow. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? As, as opposed to this is so deep that I'm gonna have to go commit to a bunch of study to figure out what the heck. Judah was saying last night in his message. I think I think you have opened the door and really given a Christ-like um, approach to this life, and you you made that invitation to people. And I just want to thank you for not making it so complicated. <laughs> and I know you had to go through your own fight to get there, but I think the reason we can receive a, a compliment like spiritual formation. I, I don't feel like I've done anything in spiritual formation if I'm keeping it a buck. But when it comes to forgiving people. I think we forget like the small basic yeah, things. Yeah, when like it comes that. to actually being a Christian. Yep. When it comes yep. to reaching across the aisle to somebody that you wouldn't normally interact with. When it comes to being in uncomfortable situations with people who think about life and relationships and sexuality differently than you do. Yep. Instead of going, oh, well, I know what this is and I better leave a second I can, how about sit there and engage them in a conversation? Come on. And go, what's up? Yep. And I'm going, to me, that's Christ-like. The woman at the well in 2024 is probably not a woman. It's probably a man dressed as a woman. Yeah. You know what I mean? And what does that conversation with Jesus look like? Come on. Yep. And so that's the kind of life I just want to live. You do. I, and I still love the local church. I still love my Christian brothers and sisters a lot. Um, but I, I just love people. Yes. And I think what you're picking up on is both of us really care about people and want to, want to see them well. And whatever journey we can be a part of to help them get there, we're going to do it. And if that's being a Christian with spiritual formation, then I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> spiritual formation is my word right now. All right, take <laughs> Run with it. I like it. Right, he said run with it. <laughs> and you see just a random fashion picture on my Instagram and the caption is spiritual, spiritual formation. Spiritual so, formation. So. Gosh, if spiritual formation gets gets us looking like you guys, then <laughs> then we will then we will take it. Honestly, thank you so much for your time for this conversation. It's really sure. blessed us thank and helped so many people. And 
thank you for being who you are. Truly, I just have to say this, Israel, whenever you come in and, and use your gift, which is music, to introduce us to Jesus, you do it in such an authentic and real way. Mm. It's not a show. It is, you can tell, it's like, yeah. oh, this is somebody Always. who knows what it's like to be with Jesus. And you are, you guys are just full a gift to us and to the world. So thank you for being That's who you are. Compliment. And we're, we're very excited about the feature film about your love story. It's going to be incredible. Um, I would would like to interview you guys as I'm... Uh, good news, though. We've got uh, Mahersha Ali will be playing you, Israel. So we're very, very excited. Yeah, yeah. I'm going. With, I'm going with the first kiss for a title. By the way, if Ooh. you're that was your first. It's a good title, right? First, the first kiss. The first kiss with the long lens from the other resort. With yeah. the TMZ guy. I say yeah. Mahersha Ali, Mahersha, Mahershala Ali, because Chelsea's in love with him. So anyway, <laughs> this doesn't have to make the show. But when the when the publicist called, they're like, okay, TMZ, because the real and TMZ are owned by the same company. They're like. Um, so we see you, you know, on the beach with this guy, but nobody can identify him. They literally... They thought I was they like an Arab sheik. They reported him as an Arab sheik and said that Adrian get, lives her lifestyle due to this Arab sheik. I'm thinking to myself... Yes! Working since I was 14, what lifestyle is this man giving me? He sure is a sheik. Congratulations, Israel. They said, we're going to either release these unflattering photos unless you give us a name. And if you give us a name, then you can, we'll release the flattering photos that you guys have taken on your trip. Swear. And the flattering ones got put up. So did the unflattering ones by another thing. That's but that's not story. the point. The point is, the <laughs> sheik's name is Israel. And it just. And I don't know many Arabs named Israel, so I'm just going <laughs> to. <laughs> this is high level Netflix comedy <laughs> special <laughs> stuff here. Happened. We were like, well, what's the sheik's name? They were like, you have to give us his name. Like, you're making a deal. <laughs> give us the man's name. And at the time, I was just going to not give it. And I remember you were like, like, girl, my life's been lit on fire, torpedoed. Go ahead. And that's when I expected her, I literally expected like a text message two hours later, like, hey, I had to leave. And, you know, you can go ahead and stay in your room you know, for the next three <laughs> days, but I'm out. I was fully expecting that. And instead, what I got was um, just the character of this woman, man. Mm. Just this Puerto Rican. Ecuadorian girl from the Lower East Side, Manhattan, who just has all the character you wish people actually had. Jeez. And, and I, I, I'm, you don't have to keep this or, or anything. I just love you guys. One other thing I have to say is when I, I was terrified to tell her, hey, here's what's really going on in my life. This is early on. Oh, and, and because oh, she, man. yeah, because she was very opinionated on her show and men who cheat, I just can't, you know. And so I'm like, I still How am I going to tell this woman, like, here's what's up. And I got a kid over here. It's like crazy. And she goes, so I tell her and I'm trembling and I'm nervous and I never get nervous about anything. But in this case, I'm like stammering and my leg is shaking and my lip is quivering. I was like, what is happening? And I tell her and she just looks at me and she goes, she just reaches across the table, grabs my hand and immediately starts praying. That is, by the way, that is not who I am as a person. I don't know what, I'm not lying to you. Oh that is not my normal. My like, I wouldn't goodness. normally do that. I'm not a person that would normally just be like, that's like, that's just not, you know what I mean? But when Which you were writing in the dark for years. I remember I was like, crying by yourself. And I didn't know why. And she says, God, just please help him know that he's not what he's done. Oh. And she said that. It was like, it was like somebody turned all the lights on. Like where I'm fighting in the dark and feel like I'm fighting in the dark with a blindfold on, just for my life. That's a whole nother podcast. Dear God. But when she said, let him know that he's not what he's done. It was like life, light, love. I, I have a shot. I, I, I might have a shot of staying alive and living this life out, walking this life out. I'm sure All because of that moment. Know what that feels like when you're like, that definitely was not me. Like That's that right. was God. Like yeah. I absolutely believe that because I normally would be like, or maybe be hesitant. Like I don't, 
that just doesn't even seem, but I, in that moment, I was just like, oh my gosh, like this is not a person that's malicious or evil. Like this is somebody who's been through something. You know my what I God, mean? My I don't God. Know, but here we are. I'm just saying, she, we, she's the actual Christian here. I, I love it when you said she's, share that. she's that is magic. So good. That is so good, Lord. And, and, and honestly, you know, all these podcasts and things that we do, you're always hoping that somebody can attach to a sentence or a phrase or a statement that maybe can serve them in, in, in their own way, in their own journey, in their commute to work. And uh, please help him remember that he's not what he's done. You know, that, 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 that can change people's trajectory of their whole life. Please yeah. let her remember she is not what she has done. Um, that is, uh, you embody that. You both do. And you treat yeah. other people like that. Um, you really do. And it's, it's contagious. And it's uh, a big part of why people are so attracted to the two of you. So uh, this wouldn't have been a complete podcast unless you shared that part. So, and right. uh, man, reaching over and just right into mm. prayer. That's spiritual formation. <laughs> That's well, what that well, is. I don't, <laughs> also, also, yo, if God tells you to go pray for somebody, actually do it. You don't even know. Because I, I normally wouldn't do that. Like, I normally would think I don't have, like, some pro prolific, like, I don't speak perfect Christianese. I wouldn't know what to say. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, I wouldn't do that. But if you feel it in your heart Come to on. just, like, go somebody in whatever words, you don't know what that can do for somebody's Absolutely. life, for somebody's heart. Do it. It might get you. Mic drop. Mic drop. drop. Mike drop. Yourself. Oh, Israel, have I thanked you today for marrying Adrian? Have I have I thanked you? I need to thank you right now. Yeah. <laughs> um God just put it in my heart. <laughs> I love you too to the <coughs> high heavens. And so this has been such a joy. Hey, let's spend more time together. I was just going to say. Let's just plan another trip to Cabo. I'm dead serious. Please. Yes, please. Take a group of friends and just get out there. We had so much fun. Man, I was just, I don't know how you feel, but mm -hmm. I was just so moved by Israel and Adrian's story and mm -hmm. their ability to let go of pain. Yeah. Honestly, when they when they mentioned that people will now DM them and say sorry for the mean things I said to you, that I actually almost teared up at that moment just because that's so Same. beautiful. And their ability to um, put themselves in other people's shoes yep. to to for healing and forgiveness. And I just thought that was so incredible. Yeah. And it's just one of those episodes that I think taking a moment of reflection and prayer is probably appropriate. I just I, I loved um kind of just anchoring or connecting or latching on to that phrase that Adrian said to Israel in one of the oh, darkest man. moments of his life. Uh, and she even admitted, you know, that it wasn't even pre-planned or prepared, but she just reached over, grabbed his hand, started praying and, and led with God, remind him he is not what he's done. And uh, boy, do we all need that reminder yeah. today. So yeah. I'm just going to pray for yeah. that. Amazing. God, thank you um, for Israel. Thank you for Adrian. Thank you for their life, the journey. Um, that you have taken them on and continue to take them on. And we just, uh, we glean from it and take from it and draft off of it right now in this moment. And I ask for every single human being that can hear this prayer that you, God, right now would remind that human, whoever, wherever, wherever and whenever they hear this, that they, yes, that person right mm -hmm. now listening are yes. not what they have done. That is not the sum of who they are. Mm -hmm. That is not the conclusion of who they are. They are who they are because of your grace and your love. And their identity is um, one of value and beauty and worth and significance um, because of you. Remind us all today. Thank you for this time and minutes and moments we share. Amen. Amen.